Malta's relationship with comics has always been a bit dodgy. Back when the only source of comics were the English juvenile comics, the Beano Dandy and the rest, there was a stigma around them. The idea was that, you know, their English was bad, so obviously teachers would not counsel students, pupils, to actually read them. And of course, this idea seeped through all of society, but there was a group of young people who were really heavily into comics, you know, the superhero comics, although they these trickled into Malta um, in the 70s and, 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 and 80s. At the beginning of the 80s, there was a massive flurry of activity that allowed a group of young people to actually make, you know, put their mark onto the comic scene in Malta. A few websites I've seen have described it as sort of the golden age of Maltese comics. <laughs> Very much doubt that's the case, but there was definitely a lot happening. And most of it was happening between 1980 and 1985. So those five years, those five years actually created what, you know, amounted to the massivity of comics in Malta up to that point. There were comics being published in newspapers, satirical comics. There were adaptations of famous novels. I personally did the Animal Farm translation into Maltese and adopted it for Haddi Mazaza. A magazine called Int, for example, commissioned me to do a comics adaptation of Oliver Frigiri's novel Il Gidba, which I did over a number of issues. There were lots of little comic strips, little activities going around, but then there were the major activities, and possibly the first of the major activities was Comic Satire. Yes, my interest in comics started from when I was a very young uh, boy. I, was, I remember I was in year three at the Lyceum, um, and I had a uh, fever, I don't know what, what it was, but it took me about one month away from school. What really cheered me was my father buying me comics. Now, it was always a, a dream that I would finally edit some some comics. Um, and w when I was in charge of satire, in the, I had an agreement with, with, with Dana to, to do six comics and see what right. uh, what happens. And we started the uh, the series, Comic Satire. We had six in all. Three of them were done by Joe Malia. Mm -hmm. One by you, one by Benny Ayuz, and one by Joe Spiteri. And then they came to an end. Obviously, I could, uh, uh, the obvious reason was that I couldn't find artists anymore. Um, you were engaged on something else, but then later on, you took on um, Aventura. These six done by the um, MUT were very successful, but what, st what brought me to hold to, to, to stop them? Because I couldn't find artists at that time. That's right. Of course, Joe yeah. Malia, you know, he, he is he's a born artist. Of course he is. And, he is. And uh, I, I, we did the three of them. We did um, Rawish Tata Talil Sira. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We, did, we did Jean Marie. And we did Monroy. Monroy, that's right. Now that's these right. had appeared in the Sunday Times. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A single, single, co single column. And they were written, and they were written in English. So I convinced him to translate them in Maltese, which I helped him in it, and they were very, they were very successful. I can imagine. I can imagine. Mine was the first one that was drawn specifically for the comic for comic satire. Uh, well, yeah. part well, part of it was already it had already appeared in satire. Remember, Vico Mason. But then the, the the first part of the story, the first story that was specifically made for comic satire. I think it was the very first one ever. I think you know that. Later on, you, you edited Il Comic. Right. Il Comic was a bit later. Before that, there was Aventura. And boy, it was an adventure. We decided we were going to put out a glossy, if you like, format comic. Made up of three stories, so partly the American style of the continuing story arc, but at the same time, adopting a tiny bit of the English style of having more than one story. The anthology style magazine, with stories that would start in one issue and then continue in the next, and then the next, providing there was a next. The person who came up with the idea and pushed it was Ray Vassallo. 
30, 38 years now since since uh, those hectic months during which we managed to come out with nearly three issues of the Aventura magazine. If I remember correctly, it was uh, at the beginning of the 80s when uh, when a number of science fiction buffs, if I uh, started these uh, these uh, meetings, and we, well, it was a sort of an, an informal club. And uh, as it turned out, most of us science fiction buffs were also <laughs> comic comic book enthusiasts. A fundamental idea was to create a a comic book, a local comic book in Maltese, which. Uh, um, which was based on the Mar Marvel or DC, perhaps more Marvel than DC, uh, model. And uh, it had to feature, it had to feature uh, the, uh, the American style of superhero, although we did, although we did manage to, to, uh, to embed in it that Maltese aspect and and to a lesser extent the European the the European philosophy of the which underlies um, our 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 super our kind of superhero, although we were we were a bunch of uh, crazy young men at that time, we 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 actually we actually started off. By, with creating a, a real a, an act, a real business plan, and uh, we managed to find a an investor who was foolish enough to to invest his money in in, in us, and uh, we we had a business plan. We found a a, a, a publisher, a printer. We, we even organized a our own distribution system. We did not. We did not go to anybody else to 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 distribute our our comics. Um, school children were discouraged from actually reading comics. You know, that we did manage to to convince the educational authorities in Malta to to accept the uh, to accept our project for what it was, and to uh, to um, allow us to distribute the comics amongst amongst local schools and to have teachers actually actually advise children to to buy it and and read i, I remember of course george malia with his with his typical maltese hero or perhaps even an anti-hero il cacciato the hunter you know i don't know uh, whether george actually loved Hunt, loved his hunter or hated him. <laughs> um, uh, then there was the f uh, uh, Joe Spider, Farouja's fascinating, fascinating uh, superhero, uh, sag sag uh, Sagittarian archer like, but actually, I would say a, uh, a version of Spider Man. Um, uh, Norman Seaboard, which is fantastic space operas. What happened was that the usual thing, I mean, uh, uh, publishing, publishing at that time, publishing was not viewed as a sustainable form of investment. And, uh, and the investor, if I remember correctly, it was uh, Martin Manjon, um, pulled out at the last one. We, we actually had the third issue nearly, nearly just about going, just about going to print, and I would say that it was perhaps it's a pity because it was perhaps the most beautiful, the most beautiful issue of all, with the cover with the cover painted by Victor Police, if I if I remember correctly. I tried getting my hands on the on the proofs, but uh, but I was unsuccessful. So so everything everything was 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 lost unfortunately but i must say i must say that kids loved it i had uh, people coming around and telling me well when's the next issue of aventura coming out when is when when is it coming out 
and uh, but uh, I think it still remains as a precursor of, of today's phantasmagoric, phantasmagoric Maltese comic book uh, scene. In the meantime, I couldn't very well sit still. I mean, I was doing lots of little bits and pieces, lots of um, comic strips here and there. But one that I particularly liked was uh, at the very beginning of the 80s, actually, when I did a series of uh, comic pages for one of the local newspapers. It was a sword and sorcery story. Um, not Robert E. Howard, but nonetheless, you know, more fairy tale, more fantasy than anything else. Um, it was called Adron Re. A bit of a fantasy, sort of high fantasy, about this uh, king um, of this fantastic land. And I couldn't just leave it be. I had to put it together. And in fact, it was published as a sort of horizontal graphic novel. I don't know whether this was the very first graphic novel in Maltese, but, you know, I'd like to think so. I think possibly the biggest adventure of those early 1980s was a comic. My idea, I have to admit, um, but I got people like Trevor Zara, Joe Farrugia on board, who helped massively, plus a stable of tremendous artists, Michele Gallia, Victor Police, uh, so many others, um, George Arpop, they, they all came together and we decided to go with an anthology style comic, English style, with say two pages or one page, humorous stories would be one page long, the adventure stories would be two pages long, and we would publish a comic every couple of weeks. Hand separated color, people like Mikhail Garia spending hours and hours and hours on the light box separating by hand, and we printed at Masterprint, who are also our publishers. Frankie Garia um, was in charge of that. It sort of went well for a long time. It was the longest running comic ever. Nine issues. A bit of a sorry state when nine issues is the longest that the comic has run. But it was massively popular. And I think it was well done, if I may say so myself. My main helper in this, and possibly one of the best artists, comic artists of the beginning of the 80s, was without a doubt Joe Spider Farrugia. And I got his comments about what he did. It was a very exciting time because in a way we're breaking new ground. And being uh, enthusiasts of comics, particularly superhero comics at the time, were very eager to try to uh, introduce the medium to a Maltese audience in any way we could. Therefore, it was only natural that uh, being very young at the time as well, we, we had that sort of enthusiasm to, to say, how about trying to do something ourselves? And uh, I remember that we're a sort of comedy. There was Trevor Zare, ourself, and others, each with our own passion for the medium. And we tried to create our own characters and our own stories. In my case, it was the superhero Sayeta. I am very much based on Marvel and DC um, comics. I could not only read comics at the time, but also have the opportunity to draw them. And really, we were doing it, we we're doing it for the fun of it. I remember, and we used to spend long hours discussing the stories, checking the artworks, uh, taking the artworks to the printer. Uh, for those who are not familiar with 20th century technology, we used to do the color separations by hand. <laughs> remember? So some pages were in color, which we used to do by hand, trying to get the desired effect on the, on the actual comic book. As usual in Malta, we have to multitask. Therefore, we did not have the specialization, the classic specializations of inker, penciler, colorist, writer. It used to be the same person doing the whole package within very tight deadlines. So I'm sure you remember that, George. Um, Kismet was a comic strip. And I had offered a newspaper at the time to, to do this comic. And I, uh, I explained the concept behind it, which was very meta metaphysical, a bit presumptuous on my part as well. But it was something that doing it over a series, as a series over a number of weeks uh, was uh, extremely rewarding. 
basically this the whole story takes place in a few seconds because and again i'm trying to remember the story here but but um, from what i recall it was a, a surgeon performing an operation asks himself what am i doing here and he embarks on this mental journey so he's transported from the operating theater to a very uh, bizarre um, landscapes where he meets a, a number of characters on the way but all of it is focused on the the reason of uh, of existence why this person exists at the end of the story he transported back to where he started at the surgical table and um, he he falls down and dies of a heart attack so really, it was a uh, the last few moments of his life. And in fact, I used to get a lot of comments at the time. What the hell are you printing on that on that, that comic strip? Where is this? <laughs> Where is this leading to? A sort of spin-off from uh, from a Doctor Strange comic, so so to speak. The fact that we used to read each other's stories and also make some informal contributions as the process went along, I think that was a very um, uh, rewarding time. And, and, and especially the fact that we were distributing the comic book in, in schools. As we know uh, at the time, and to a certain extent it still is, there is a certain bias against the comic and graphic novel um, medium by many, by many parents. But many were, many were saying that it was a worthy initiative and uh, they began to accept the medium, even buying it for their kids. Distribution problems meant that the comic died with number nine. And that was the last of the collective efforts, if you like. There were a couple of other things happening round about that time as well. Even publishers like Club Code Baltine put out a couple of comics, two of them were related to Maltese legends drawn by Manuel Haruja. Um, one of the things that uh, I must mention is Mhaba Vera, which was started by that most famous of all Maltese comic creators, Joe Sacco, before he became famous, before he became known to the world as the graphic journalist. It was continued by us, <laughs> Nom de Plund. I wrote the rest of the stories after Joe left. I drew half of them. Other, other artists drew others. I won't mention names since they are still non diplomed but it was a stable of artists and we loved doing it. It was also massively popular, especially among the girls. And then 1985 came along and somehow all the efforts just faded out. Comics remained popular, but we were now busy with other things, not really having the time to actually throw our energy back into an explosion of creativity, which we had done up to that point. <laughs>